Hey guys, it's Alex with Serious Goose Games, and welcome to the first video in a series where we are going to make a tactics RPG game. So to get started, you're going to open up Unity Hub. If you haven't created any projects, this will be blank, but if you've got projects, they'll show up here. Go ahead and hit the blue New Project button, and we are using Unity 6, 6.2.1, and we are using the Universal 3D template. Then you can go ahead and give your project a name. And you can choose the location if you want to put it in a different spot. Once you've got everything set, go ahead and hit the blue create button. Now when Unity opens, yours probably isn't going to look like this. So up in the top right corner, we have layouts. If I click that, we have a bunch of different options. Default is probably the one you have. And if you don't like this layout, if this doesn't work for you, you can drag and drop these panels wherever you want. You can change the engine to look and feel however you need it to, to be productive. Now, I have a layout that I prefer, which is the one that you just saw. And I have my scene and my game view docked next to each other. So if I modify something in scene, I can see what it's going to look like in game. And the reason... I set up like that is because I've done a lot of like idle games where it's a lot of UI work. So being able to modify and see it happening at the same time is it's nice. I've got my hierarchy, inspector, and project all on the side here. Uh, they're close together, so I don't need to be moving my mouse all the way across the engine. And I've got my console docked at the bottom. Now, your layout might be different, so I'm going to try to specify where I'm clicking, where I'm putting things um, as I do it. Because if you see me clicking over here, it might not line up with whatever you have over there. So if I click something in the hierarchy, I will specify in the hierarchy or in the project folder or in the inspector. So the plan for today is just to get the project set up, get it looking good to go, um, and mocking up a quick battle scene so we can get an idea of how things are going to start to look as we progress through the next couple of videos. So the very first thing we want to do is select the README asset in the project folder and click Remove README Assets in the Inspector. It's a bunch of tutorial stuff. We don't need them. The next thing we're going to do is create a few folders. So we're going to create a folder by right-clicking in the Assets window. Go to Create Folder. And we're going to name this first one Scripts. This will be where all our code goes. Now we're going to right click down here again and create a new folder. This one for materials. And then we're going to create one more folder. We might add more as we go. So create folder. And this will be for prefabs. That's where any of our prefab game objects will go. So the first thing I want to do is change the camera so it's more of an isometric view. And the way we're going to do that is by adjusting the position to 10 on the x-axis, 15 on the y-axis, and we're going to keep negative 10 on the z-axis. So if you ever want to move something around, you can click on it in the scene view, or you can manually change it in the inspector using the transform component. Really, it depends on how precise you need to be. The next thing we want to do is adjust the rotation. So we're going to rotate it on the x-axis by 45 degrees. And then we're going to rotate it on the y-axis by negative 45 degrees. And that will give us a nice isometric view. The next thing we want to do is right-click in our hierarchy. And we're going to create an empty game object. And we're going to name it Grid Manager. Now, when you create a new game object, Unity tries to place it in the center of the scene view. Wherever you are, wherever you're looking, it tries to put it there. Uh, which isn't always great. I want to put mine at the world origin, 000. So I'm going to right-click on the transform component in the inspector and hit reset. And that's going to put it back to where it should be. Now I'm going to right-click in the hierarchy again, create empty. And we're going to name this object unit. Again, we'll reset the transform. And then we're going to do that one more time. Right-click in the hierarchy, create empty. And we're going to call this one tile and reset the transform. So these three objects, we are going to give some children. Let's start with the tile. We're going to right-click on our tile in the ins our hierarchy, go to 3D object, and we're going to grab a cube. And we're going to name this cube Tile Art. 
Now, the reason I'm doing this uh, kind of child parent structure here is because eventually we'll have actual art for our tiles. They're not just going to be cubes. We might have one with some trees on it or maybe some beach tiles or a road tile or a bridge. So setting it up like this makes it super easy to swap out art without changing the logic because the parent is going to have all of the logic. So we're going to grab the tile art object and we're going to go into the inspector and change its scale on the y-axis to 0.1. And that's going to smush it down a little. Once you do that, you can grab your tile in the hierarchy, the parent object, and drag it into your prefab folder. And now we have a prefab object and you can actually delete that original tile. Now let's grab our unit. We're going to right click on it, go to 3D object, create a cube. We're going to call this unit art. And we're going to choose the scale in the inspector for our unit art to 0.8 by 1 by 0.8. And then once you've done that, again, you're going to drag it into the inspector and delete. So with that done, we can grab our tile prefab and drag it from our project folder onto our grid manager. And that's going to spawn it into the world. We'll reset its transform. And now what we can do with this tile selected, we can hit control D. And then I'm going to change its position on the X axis by one. And then I'll duplicate again and I'll change its position on the X axis to negative one. Now I'll grab all three tiles, duplicate all three and change their position on the Z axis to negative one. And I'll grab those three tiles that we just duplicated. Control D to duplicate them again. And change their Z-axis value to positive one. So that gives us a little 3x3 three three grid. It's kind of hard to tell that it's a grid, though. If we look at our game view, it just kind of looks like one long flattened cube. So what we're going to do is, in our project panel, we're going to go to our materials folder, and we're going to right-click inside here, go to create, new material and we're going to name this tile underscore dark and we're going to create another material the same way right click create material tile underscore light and then we'll do one more material and this is going to be unit underscore player now eventually we're going to have character models and they're not going to have just like a singular material they might have a couple materials on them um so eventually this will end up being kind of the mini map material and it's going to be a blue color so in the inspector when we have one of our materials highlighted or selected if we look at surface inputs we see this base map node if we click on that we can pull up this color menu i'm going to change our unit material to blue I'm going to grab our tile light. I'm going to change it to kind of a light gray. I'm going to grab tile dark. I'm going to change that to a dark gray. So now we've got these three materials. I'm going to drag them from the projects panel onto our objects in the scene view. Mm -hmm. You can see as soon as I hover over an object while I'm dragging it, it applies the material to whatever object I'm hovering over. And if I release, it applies the material. So I'm just creating a little checkerboard pattern here. And now I'm going to go to our prefab folder. I'm going to grab our unit prefab and I'm going to place it down on our grid. I'll put it there. I'm going to clean up its position a little bit. So we've got negative one by one. And one more thing I'm going to change actually. I'm going to double click my unit prefab to open it up. You can see that the origin of the object is kind of in the center of this cube and I actually want the origin to be on the bottom. So I'm going to grab our unit art. I'm going to raise it up by 0.5. And what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that the origin of our unit object is exactly where it needs to be. If I were to add a component here, let's say a box collider, you can see that this box is actually centered at the bottom. So with that done, I'm also going to go to our materials folder 
and drag our air material. And then we can go back. Unfortunately, because of how I changed that, he is now floating. So let's grab our unit that we brought in and bring it down. 0 0.05 on the y-axis should put it flush with the tile. Now once you've got everything put together, go ahead and hit Control s to save. You can hit play. It's not really going to do anything yet. But this should give you a rough idea of what we're working with. Uh, as we progress through the next few videos, we're going to see this kind of flesh out and become a bit more interactive. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, it's just a rough visual to give us an idea of what it's going to look like. Uh, in the next video, we're going to create the grid through code. Because I don't know about you, but placing all those tiles, kind of miserable. And doing it with a bunch of them, even worse. So we're going to make the code do it for us. And that'll be our first bit of code. That's all for today, though. So if you're excited to build this project along with me, hit like and help other devs find the series. And subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. I'd also love to hear from you in the comments, which mechanics are you most interested in? For example, classes from Fire Emblem or more of an active combat cover system like XCOM. I personally love the class progression in Fire Emblem, so I'm going to be kind of gearing towards that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm Alex with Serious Goose Games, and I'll see you in the next one.